Smith. But first, the Melbourne International Comedy Festival finished up its month of mirth tonight and just before she jumps back on a plane to England, one of its funniest international visitors has joined us in the studio. Please welcome to our stand-up spot, Shappy Corsandi. <laughs> Look at you, you're lovely. It's like one of my family weddings in here, but a slightly <laughs> different colour. You know, <laughs> my name is Shappy. Shappy is not my real name, it's a nickname. It's short for Sharp Haddock. I changed it to Shappy when I was 12. I got sick of being called Shit Attack. <laughs> Teachers are so cruel. <laughs> There's not that many female comics at the Melbourne Comedy Festival, but there has been a few more here than the Comedy Festival in um, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> You've made us laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Now you must die. <laughs> I love being a female comic. Yeah, Australian audiences has been have been lovely, but in England, often I come on stage and I perform to drunken blokes that all look like that. You know, the kind of blokes I mean, the kind of guys that think, help, means yes. And... <laughs> Hang on a minute, there's a woman on the stage. And I go, yeah, I know, some of us get on the stage now without a pole. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I get wolf whistles, which is lovely. I never used to get that when I was a bloke. <laughs> now, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell yet, but I'm um, nearly five months pregnant. Um, actually, just, just, just for a bit of a long shot, does anyone happen to know a guy from Sydney with blonde <laughs> dreadlocks? <laughs> name of Mr. Shag Nasty? <laughs> no? Don't worry, we'll find your daddy. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm married. Actually, my husband's not talking to me at the moment because <laughs> I cheated on him. <laughs> Only child can't share. <laughs> but I am, um... <laughs> they say, right? They say that, that when women are pregnant, our brains shrink. And if I'm honest with you, I was at my most stupid about two minutes before I conceived. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be all right, it's Christmas! <laughs> all I had to do was reach under the bed and I could have had a drink at the Melbourne Festival. <laughs> I don't even celebrate Christmas. Like my family are uh, Iranian. Um, it's all right. I'm unarmed, and there are. <laughs> there's very few Iranians in Australia. I've noticed and it's because us Iranians we like to carry around a lot of fruit and nuts all the time, so it's quite hard for us to get into Australia. So my parents went to London, and I remember when I was a kid, my mum didn't know what Christmas was, and I had to explain it to her. She goes, "Let me get this straight." Old man breaks into the house, <laughs> creeps into your bedroom, <laughs> empties his sack. <laughs> you are not having Christmas. <laughs> but I loved Christmas at school. I always wanted to play an angel, you know, like in the nativity plays. But as my teachers explained to me, no shit attack. <laughs> <laughs> little blonde girls are angels. Little brown girls are the whores of Babylon. <laughs> You know, in Britain, British people are always saying to me, Oh, you're Iranian. Our next door neighbours are Indians. <laughs> really? I must go around. <laughs> Compare spices. And another um, thing that people always ask me, they assume that I'm religious because I'm beige, but <laughs> I was not raised with a religion at all. And uh, so when I was growing up, I only pray when I want something really badly. And I prayed to my god, Donna Kare. And <laughs> my parents weren't very typical Iranian parents. I asked them if they'd arrange a marriage for me. They said, oh, get down the pub like everyone else. <laughs> they didn't really support me in my career choices either, to be honest with you. I really wanted to be a doctor. My parents pushed me into stand-up comedy. <laughs> they said, only Western whores become doctors. <laughs> But I got my British passport finally. I had to pledge an oath to the Queen. She's desperate for friends. <laughs> I pledge an oath to the Queen and her heirs. That means if William or Harry won a favour off me, I have to do it. <laughs> and I have no idea where to buy cocaine. <laughs> I tell you what, you all look quite young. Now listen, don't in fact I can be all your mothers if we live somewhere rural. I um, <laughs> never take cocaine. I took cocaine once at a party and I walked around all night talking really loudly about myself. Had no effect on me at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for Sandy. And a resident thanks to Sue Attack as well. Oh, yeah. Good story. We'll be right back with more.